the next uh, half hour, the uh, slot where all the clarion committees will uh, present um, the work that they've done in the past years. Um, without further ado, I would like to invite um, Elena Offersgaard, who is chairing the uh, clarion assessment committee uh, to give her presentation. So uh, here, a few uh, words from the assessment committee. Uh, you can see here who we are. Uh, Lena, Josef, Cyprian, Dan, Ricardo and Thomas. And uh, we are working behind the scenes uh, most of the time. So, uh, but I will tell you what we do. And uh, please, next slide. So uh, we do assessment of B centers. And uh, now I'll give you a short status for the period from mid-September last year to mid-September now. And as you already, if you remember that si short uh, sentence from Dita, we have no new B centers in that period, but we have reassessment of two centers and that the um, uh, Clarion SI and uh, uh, the Austrian Center for Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage. And then we have still some uh, uh, Centers in process from the round of number 17. We're going to finalize that here uh, in the next few days. And then I'll just tell you that we have centers that still is in the CTS process. And for those that are not very, uh, that are a bit new to this, it's uh, CTS is the core trust seal. And to, to be a B center, you will have to go through this core trust seal certification process. And that is quite a thing. So I would say it easily takes up to, to nine months to go through this. And uh, even we call up, we talk about the B center checklist and the B center assessments. We are kind of only the cream on top of a very difficult assessment that's go from the CTS the core trust seal and of course it's not that difficult so please give me the next slide so here i'll just tell you a little bit about the steps to become a b sender and uh, first the first step is to become a c sender and uh, what is that that is metadata harvest to the vlo and uh, when you have that kind of process up and running, uh, you can then apply for the, the core trust seal. The core trust seal is checking out if the organizational, the, uh, all kinds of stuff around your center is, uh, is nice. It's checking out in that way that you describe and they see if they find that you have done documentation about your data center. The happy thing is that Clarion will pay the fee for this. And when then you have applied for the core trust seal, you can fill in the, the B-Center checklist. And if you have questions, please ask us also when you fill in the checklist, then you can apply for the B-Center certification by sending the checklist and your core trust seal application draft and then we will ask you some questions, but even better, you will also get feedback from the core trust seal and that might take a few months. So please start up with the core trust seal application before you apply to become a B center. Just a few months in advance would be nice, but you choose. And in the end, uh, tell us when you get the core trust seal. And you can mail us at this address, and I hope the slides will be available somewhere afterwards. And next slide, please. It's your last minute, uh, Lena. Yes. So the next round will be October 29th and then April next year. And uh, we will synchronize the, vali the valid validity of the seals. So it will be three years from you get the core trust seal. And just give us some feedback or write us. Thanks. Thank you, Lena. Um, the next presentation will be by Martin Matisen, who's chairing the so-called center committee. Yes, hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes. 
Yes, so hello everyone. My name is uh, Martin Matissen and I work for CSC IT Center for Science in Finland and I'm the chair of the Standing Committee for Clarin Technical Centers or SCCTC. So what is the SCCTC? Um, the goal is to make sure that centers don't diverge more than necessary in terms of interoperability. This is in short formally and informally. Formally by closely li liaising with the center assessment committee, um, so what Lene just presented, and informally by regular meetings where ideas and experience can be exchanged. The SCCTC reports to the Clarin Board of Directors. Um, the moderated mailing list is presently used for its members members but like last year i would like to encourage listeners uh, to use it to present questions or comment comments to the sccdc please have some patience for the answer next slide please so we had nine meetings last year uh, since the last um, yearly conference and uh, here are some example of our topics the first example is uh, wiki tongs as a cooperation example Finclarine got approached by Wikitongs, a non-profit profit that gathers language examples in a Wikipedia-like fashion. Finclarine did not have the funding or staffing at the time to react to the request, so I posed the request to the SCCTC, and Lindat in Prague thankfully answered the call. And apparently a memorandum of understanding has already been signed. Um, we also increased the collaboration with the National Coordinators Forum um, to some extent. Um, we use the same reporting sheet already for quite a while, and we are regularly asked to comment on their plans. Um, a new initiative is the Claren Resource Family Task Force, where the SCCTC has also a permanent member. In the area of Claren's authentication and authorization infrastructure, Claren Eric started a discussion on introducing a so-called Claren proxy. One reason for such a proxy is to be able to deliver additional user attributes, and another is to easily proxy between uh, different technologies like SAML2 and OpenID Connect. And the last item on the list comes from the Metadata Task Force, who have been working on metadata core components. Um, altogether, four use case specific profiles have been uh, in created as draft implementations, and two of them have been added since the last report since last year. We altogether have uh, 29 generic core component um, draft implementations, and 14 were updated since last year. Next slide, please. So there are still some open issues. Uh, the first is the discovery service uptake, which we have in the work plan for this year. We also acknowledge that, B center set, that the Clarin B Center certification process have become much more demanding, and some centers have opted to fall back on C Center status for a while because of it. Uh, Lena already mentioned this, and we will closely monitor this development. Some of our task forces have been uh, rather dormant or understaffed for a while. Progress in some area hinges on far too few people. So if you feel feel passionate about the areas of our task for, that our task forces cover today, please contact me or the center mailing list. So, so this is my last slide and gives you an overview over the task forces and one special in, interest group that we have. So we have four task forces and one special interest group that um, are uh, attached to the SCCTC. And uh, the first one is the metadata task force with uh, Twan, Gosen, and Menzo Windhauer as coordinators. And I already uh, mentioned um, the progress on the core components, and they have also been working on fair vocabularies. Next one is Federated Content Search with uh, Leif Joran Öls Olson as a coordinator. And um, he's been working on the um, Federated Content Search uptake now for quite a few years. Um, Third one, persistent identifiers. Coordinators are Dan Broder and Tero Alto. And um, they are working on the Clarin PID, updating the Clarin PID documentation. The fourth task force and last task force is the authentication and authorization infrastructure task force, where I am currently acting as the um, coordinator. So um, this is essentially being vacant for a year, this um, position. And um, 
we have we've been working on um, increasing the uh, Lindat's attribute aggregator uptake and also um, had a meeting on the Clarion proxy discussion. And then I would like to mention the Fedora special interest group, um, interest group for all users of Fedora Commons, Commons within Clarion, coordinators Thomas Eckhart, and uh, currently they are sharing experiences about the new version of Fedora, Fedora 6. And this is all from my side. Thank you. Uh, Bente, sorry, uh, I was muted. <laughs> You're welcome yes. to start your presentation on the Knowledge Infrastructure Committee works. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I would like to start with one slide uh, talking about the, <coughs> uh, the, the fact that Karen has two parallel and complementary infrastructures, you can say, the technical infrastructure that we've heard a good deal about, and the knowledge infrastructure. Uh, of course, the um, Knowledge Infrastructure Committee does not take care of all of the Knowledge Infrastructure Committee to say this is what Francisca presented yesterday, but still, it's important, it's important to see this part. Please, next slide. So uh, what is our task? Uh, it's to advise the BOD about uh, strategy and policy and promotion infrastructure related activities and uh, approval of applications, for instance, uh, uh, the um, new knowledge centers that are applying. In, in a way, uh, you know, it's the BOD that formally approves, but uh, at the Knowledge Infrastructure Committee, we uh, do the job. Um, and uh, the rest, I, I don't think I should get into more details. Let's move on. Yeah, so what have we been doing? The Knowledge Centers are the most important part of our portfolio, and here's a link to them. Um, and in the this year, two, New knowledge centers have been approved, the uh, Center for Computer Mediated Communication Social Media Corpora and the Clarion Knowledge Center for Dutch. Um, so this means that we now have uh, 25 case centers and we have one more application in the pipeline, so we will soon have 26. And the first workshop for knowledge centers was organized November, December 2020. And the purpose was to promote collaboration between case centers to let them know more about each other. You cannot collaborate if you don't know what the others are doing. This was very well received. It was the first one organized of this type and it will be repeated. This year it will be, we will have a workshop on 14th of December. As a result of last year's uh, uh, case center workshop, a group of case centers have started a collaboration on sign language. That's what can come out of this kind of discussion. Next one. So uh, there's a bit more I want to say about the past year. Work has been ongoing to improve the findability of case centers through making sure that they are described with the right keywords so that you, when you do a search, keyword search for case center, you get the right ones out. This is still ongoing, uh, but we are improving, I think. And uh, I would also mention that according to the bylaws, we have maximum five members in the kit. And uh, out of these, we got four new members in May 21. So uh, this is giving us new blood, new ideas, but of course also uh, a little bit of uh, time for understanding what the task is. What are the plans? We want to continue, of course, to support the Knowledge Center visibility. I mean, with 25 or 26, we really have something. And we will try to make sure we have the right case centers. So if we feel that something is missing, we may suggest uh, to somebody to organize uh, one more case center. And we want to continue to organize case center workshops and in investigate other ways of supporting our case centers and their collaboration. And according, uh, and then I have this comment on visibility. Uh, actually, it has uh, a quick fix has been already made so that you now can find easily the knowledge infrastructure uh, uh, on the website on the first page, and then you will find easily the case centers. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, uh, hi, Pavel. Yes, uh, yes, thank you very much. For your committee. 
Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Pavel Kanotsky, um, and I am from uh, the, the Institute of for the German Language in Mannheim, but I am here uh, on behalf of the Clarion Legal and Ethical Issues Committee uh, that uh, I have been chairing since uh, recently. Uh, can you please move to the next slide? So uh, very briefly, uh, let me tell you what the CLIC, because Clarion Legal and Ethical Issues uh, Committee is abbreviated as CLIC traditionally, um, what the CLIC's main missions are. So our main uh, mission, the very main mission is to advise uh, the board of directors on legal and ethical issues. Why I put legal and ethical issues in inverted commas? Well, not because I mean it ironically, but because uh, this uh, notion, legal and ethical issues, is specifically uh, defined on our in our uh, bylaws as including everything related to intellectual uh, prop property, uh, privacy, and data protection, as well as all the issues uh, related to um, access uh, and dissemination policies related to uh language resources so we don't do all the law related to clarin but we do uh quite still uh quite a lot and um apart from advising the board of directors uh we are also uh preparing and publishing uh, analysis organizing uh events competency building uh events um uh, we uh, consolidate, so we gather uh, recommendations from various bodies and publish them in one place. We maintain uh, the, the set of Claren uh, licenses and uh, we uh, promote uh, Claren policies in the domain of uh, legal issues. Can we please move to the next slide, please? Um, in 2021, uh, there uh, have been quite uh, a few changes in our lineup. Uh, we have a new chair, uh, which is yours truly, since March 21, uh, and also a new vice chair, uh, which is my learned uh, colleague, uh, Vanessa Hannesschläger uh, from uh, Austria. But more importantly, we also have new members from Lithuania, Italy, and Norway. And there is a trend for uh, an increased participation of trained lawyers within the clique, the clique uh, which is a very good trend, uh, given that uh, our primary role is to advise uh, the BOD on uh, legal issues. So we, it is not our intention to become uh, a, a law department or a law firm in, 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 in any way. We want to uh, be composed of a mix of language researchers and lawyers, but of course to advise on legal issues. Uh, it is good to have uh, lawyers and the, the, the more the merrier, so to say. So we are very grateful to the national consortia that uh, sent us um, highly qualified uh, members. Thank you very much. Um, in 2021, we have had two meetings so far. Let me be more specific. That's three meetings since the last Clarin conference and two meetings in 2021. That is not a lot, uh, I admit, but we uh, have very frequent email discussions in informal subcommittees, work on, on specific tasks or, or, or specific projects. Uh, these, we exchange emails almost on a, on a weekly basis. Um, we have organized a Claren uh, Cafe in March, and this cafe was about the rights of data subjects in language resources, which was quite a success, uh, I reckon, because there, there, there were um, over 80 uh, registered participants from the Claren community and beyond. Um, we have organized a, a joint networking meeting with ELDA, and ELDA is uh, an equivalent of the CLIC uh, for, uh, in, in Daria, uh, in Daria Eric. Um, so uh, we have many members in common and we would like to uh, organize more uh, joint activities in the future. And we are talking um, 
uh, about a, a joint workshop or a joint conference. We have uh, prepared two papers for this uh, conference um, and a chapter for the uh, Claren 10th anniversary, anniversary book uh, about specifically about the role of CLIC and the, the achievements and the activities of, of the CLIC uh, so far. Can we move to the next slide, please? Oh, I hope this is your last slide, Pavel, because you're running out of time. Yes, uh, by all means. We will organize a new cafe uh, in October, and it will be about text and data mining exceptions. Uh, so we are all, you are all invited to participate. We are also working on a set of handouts on the GDPR. Um, and um, I think we will have something for you very, very soon. And we will invite um, the whole community to to participate uh, in uh, writing those uh, handouts or at least reviewing our first results. Uh, and for more distant future, we are also thinking about the white paper on the use of social media data in language research. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, please, uh, the next slide just contains my uh, email address and the email address of our mailing list. Please free to join us and write to us with whatever uh, we can do for us. Okay, thank you, Pavel. Then I hand over to uh, Piotr Banski, who will present the Standards Committee. Uh, my name is Piotr Banski. I have the honor of uh, being the chair of the C uh, CSC, and I'm employed at uh, IDES Mannheim. Let's move to the next slide, please. Uh, on which uh, you can see an excerpt from uh, our bylaws, and I have underlined uh, some key phrases that uh, the committee has focused on in the uh, current cycle. Uh, and I'm only going to, of course, flash them by you because uh, that would take a separate uh, uh, presentation. So uh, we collect, consolidate, and prepare for publication in a single place uh, various findings uh, regarding uh, standards-related recommendations. Uh, we should maintain the set of standards supported by Clarin, uh, publish and promote them. Uh, we should uh, develop and implement procedures uh, for the discussion of uh, recommendations. And we should ensure a harmonization of standards between uh, Clarin, ERIC and related initiatives. Uh, and much of that, or all of that actually, uh, has been in our focus in various ways uh, in, the, in the current cycle. Let's move to the next slide, please. Uh, we've had 10 meetings uh, since the last uh, yearly conference, and we have been busy pursuing our statu statutory goals, uh, as underlined in the previous slide, uh, focusing mainly on creating uh, the infrastructure and uh, getting the data for unified recommendations for data deposition formats. And we've arrived at version 1.0 just this month, so it's not uh, yet fully published. Not all newspapers know about it, and you know, but it's going to be there uh, until the end of the week. Uh, and uh, our main tool uh, for delivery is the standards information system, uh, which is uh, there to gather uh, the relevant information uh, in one place in a way that uh, allows the centers to easily update uh, the information and to modify their recommendations. And it also enables the users to easily access uh, the information uh, in various visual, uh, visualizations. Uh, and that has been described uh, more fully in our Bazaar presentation uh, yesterday. And it's also part of the topic um, of a chapter that we have prepared for the uh, Clarin anniversary book. Uh, apart from that, uh, we have also uh, initiated collaboration with DARIA Guidelines and Standards uh, Working Group. Let's move on, please. Now, uh, about our plans uh, for the I hope next this slide. is your last slide, Piotr. It is, oh, yes. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, we want to smoothen the wrinkles. Uh, uh, visualize uh, better uh, the list of recommendations, add more format descriptions. And we, and this is crucial, we want to invite centers to uh, 
to use the CIS uh, rather than uh, or alongside uh, the recommendations uh, placed at their own home pages. Uh, just a sec. And we even think about finding a spot in the B Center checklist. Uh, and uh, we would also like to, to initiate collaboration with other parts of the infrastructure. Uh, for example, switchboard for the collected media types because we collect them. Uh, and maybe even the bagman uh, to make him less agnostic about formats. Uh, we are going to offer a Clarin Cafe towards the end of the year, or more likely the beginning of the next year. And we would uh, dearly like to recruit new members. Uh, and eventually, we wish to revamp the standards related as opposed to format related part of the SIS. And in the next slide, which I don't have any time for, there are some details about how to contact us and how to get more information about what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Piotr. To reassure you, the slides will be uh, online soon, so everybody can check the details here. And I hand over now to uh, Daya Fischer for the User Involvement Committee. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I will present the work of the User Involvement Committee, which is the latest uh, of the committees to join uh, the Clarin governance model. Uh, so this is briefly the mission or the scope of uh, the committee. Our tasks are to facilitate various user involvement initiatives that are con conducted by Clarin Eric and to promote the uh, financing instruments relevant for user involvement within the consortium and networks of researchers uh, locally and regionally. Uh, we also uh, aim to promote user involvement participation at the relevant national and international user involvement events, as well as facilitate the user involvement related service that Clarin Eric is conducting. Currently, uh, the lineup of the um, uh, leaders of the committee uh, is me as chair, uh, Maria as vice chair, and Jakob as uh, our support uh, from the office. And now I will move on to presenting uh, the results uh, of the activities uh, in this year. We have contributed uh, importantly to two um, very important uh, Clarin activities. These are two declaring and clearing resource families with the help of the user involvement committee. Um, we have managed to uh, put together the fourth volume of Tour de Clarin uh, booklet, in which we have uh, helped to coordinate and to uh, identify valuable stories and uh, uh, researchers to highlight for one consortium, four K centers, and two B centers. And for the Clarin Resource Families Initiative, we have uh, intensified significantly the curation efforts uh, in order to. To, um, improve the metadata issues that we have identified in the past. We have also together performed the gap analysis with respect to what's missing, and we will be proposing to extend the initiative with these new families of resources and tools. We have uh, worked on the qualitative best practice guides for new deposits in order to avoid future issues that we have identified with past deposits, um, as well as uh, advised on clarin resource families projects. Uh, we have in total received three uh, proposals. One has been approved by the BOD and two are still under review. We're also working towards uh, proactively encouraging the deposits of existing impactful resources in Clarin. Um, we have supported the Clarin Eric use, user involvement initiatives, most uh, importantly, the virtual workshops and training events, uh, the ambassadors program, uh, we have uh, proposed uh, people to be nominated and two have successfully been appointed and announced already, uh, as well as um, featured uh, our national activities uh, in the upcoming Clarin monograph, which will be published uh, next year by Springer. Next slide, please. 
these are, this is the most important slide. This is a report of the national user involvement activities. In total, we have recorded over 250 activities this year, which up till now is 11 uh, fewer than uh, the previous year. As you can see, many countries have multiple uh, activities this year, and almost all member and observer countries have at least one. Most of the events are short in duration. They're uh, one of single day events. They have uh, been attended by over 11,000 participants in total, which means that we really have a good reach to the research community in Europe. Um, they have mostly been teaching events as well as academic dissemination activities. Uh, for training activities, they have been mostly carried out online due to COVID, but there have also been some face-to-face -face events like Clarina's research course on data research and research and preparation. And we even had uh, the birth of the first ever uh, Clarin summer school in Greece uh, called Language Technology and SSH. In terms of media dissemination, most have been uh, done in uh, writing, but we also have increasingly new modalities uh, in the form of, for example, YouTube videos and podcasts. In terms of uh, reported metadata, we have um, almost all events uh, equipped with uh, area of um, uh, focus of the event, uh, and I listed them uh, on the right side. You can see that we are um, catering to the communities from linguistics, humanities, computer science, literary studies, political science, and sociology and history most frequently. And the range of languages is also on the rise. The, these are the four, four most frequently um, reported languages. In addition to English, we also have multiple events and activities uh, on Swedish, Polish, and Italian. Um, this is uh, all from us uh, for now. We would uh, like to welcome you all to visit our uh, website um, on the Clarin page. It's new and let us know if anything important is missing, so we will be happy to add them. If you have any specific questions, comments and suggestions, do let us know by email. But you're also very welcome to subscribe to our mailing list, which is an open mailing list, and we mostly discuss and disseminate various invitations, um, initiatives, proposals, and so on. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Daria, and, and thanks to all the presenters for the overview of uh, the work done in the committees.